Well, we're here at the B East, um, which is in East Brunswick, which isn't to be confused with the East Brunswick Club, with the Scarbenders, and we're backstage in the band closet, all crammed in here nice and tight. They're just about to go on in a little bit, and we're doing a bit of an interview. They're coming up to about the 10th year in playing around the Melbourne circuit. So over that time, you've played a lot of shows. What do you reckon some of the more fun ones are? Some of the good memories oh, look, you've had we've, of playing? We've had a lot of fun, really, the last 10 years. This is uh, going to be our 10th year. We've played around Australia. We supported, in the early days, we supported the Beat and the... Um, uh, uh, yeah, Carlos Malcolm, Malcolm. The, uh, the specials, special beat Neville Staples. Uh, we've had some great gigs at the corner just on our own, supporting the Crusaders Scooter Club as well, doing a show there called Just the Tonic, raising a charity show. Uh, we've done a few festivals. Uh, I think our most recent fun gig would be a trip to Adelaide. We went to Adelaide in October. And just had a ball played with five gigs in a weekend, which isn't bad for some old blokes, I reckon. Uh, when you were forming the band, was it a conscious thing to be playing ska music, or did you form the band and then fall into the genre? No, no, it was actually, the band started uh, at the, um, the ska bar that we were talking about yep, before. Yep, sure, run right out the, the outhouse. That's right, right Sharon ago. run a marvellous uh, marvellous monthly night there that I spent many a night in oblivion which was fantastic <laughs> and uh, that's where I met Stevie and uh, at that time in Melbourne there wasn't really any two-tone or sort of traditional ska bands around at the time. And, an old uh, band that, that came and did a gig there. Yeah. 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 Oh, was I can't it? remember the names. The Blue Beat Dogs, maybe. Yeah, I can't remember the names. The Strange yeah. Tent. <laughs> the Strange Tent. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, we got together um, and then um, we played, basically, it was two Tony Scar and we were writing our own tunes as well. And then uh, we, it was a lot of changeovers, and then Chris and John came into the band and we pretty much settled on. A sound we love our covers. We love to delve deep because, look, the thing about the Scar Enders is you've got seven or eight Scar tragics in the band. We all just yeah, love the music. Yeah, we just love the stuff. Yeah. Um, so we we dig deep for our covers. We try and not choose uh, covers that are too uh, obvious. Yep. Although I mean, doing Rudy or I don't know what, what other big covers that enjoy yourself. They're fantastic mm. tunes. But um, all the other stuff we try and make a little bit more. Um, I guess, what do you call it? Raincoaty, Anaraki. <laughs> so it's, not uh, so well known. Not yeah, so I well just feel like I you know, explore this, the music a bit because there's a lot of depth to it. Um, we are tragics, we're all tragics in this stuff, and uh, there's a lot of depth to it. The more you, you, the more you go into it, the more you realise there's stuff you just don't know and little sort of avenues to explore. I love the name of Scarbenders because it just sort of keeps the focus on what, what it's all about really for us. It's just that beat, you know, it's, it's just, we just love that groove mm -hmm. and uh, we, 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 we wander around all over the place, I thought. Yeah, we're we not, do. We're not uh, going to turn into, into a pop band. band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not going to no, but, uh, five it, boys in it, white suits. You know, it's, like it's always got that beat and it, we just we tend to wander around in our selections and, and, and stuff. And, even lately, I've noticed there's been a sort of like a little change of direction. Well, not change of direction, but we've explored some avenues that we haven't been up before. Um, and it's just fabulous because the guys are great players, uh, and we can do that. You know, we can, we can sort of really satisfy ourselves doing it. It's great fun. Yeah, so we try and do, it's not even over the scarf indoors. I mean, we do Jamaican rhythm and blues because yep. um, that came way before ska. Uh, we love the rock steady. We've been playing a bit of skinhead yeah. reggae recently as well. The thing is, though, we will never be, we'll never sound Jamaican because we're not Jamaican. Do you know what I mean? We're a, sure. a, a mishmash of expat British guys, folks from uh, Adelaide, folks from here, folks from there, and it's mm. the Melbourne mix. So it's got that. Mm. I think I'd like to think it's got a bit of a Melbourne flavour to it. You know, definitely. I think also uh, these days, I was in uh, Jamaica sort of mid last year actually, 
and there's very little scar left over there. A lot of uh, what's about is sort of more mm. dance hall stuff, mm, and it's yeah, actually yeah. really hard to find yeah. even uh, sort of more classic reggae stuff beyond Bob Marley. You yeah, sort of bring right. up names like Desmond Decker, mm. and uh, a lot of people give you blank stares, which mm. is a real shame. Yeah. So it's kind of it's good in a way that you guys are going out there and you're getting some of the. Uh, as you were saying, the less known covers and playing them and bringing light to that mm. sort of music. Mm. Um, so, moving on to a different topic. Today is a bit of a day people might have seen posters around, they might have heard adverts for SLAM, which stands for Sl Save Live Australian Music. Mm. Now, mm. there's a lot of bit things that have been going on in Melbourne for the last few years. There's been a lot of venues that have been given a bit of grief by residents moving in and complaining about noise restrictions. There's been a lot of changes to uh, licensing and stuff. Um, how do you see this affecting you guys? Uh, well, those people that move in, um, it's like they're saying that they should move to the country, really. It's you know what I mean? It's just that sure. <laughs> if, if you want to come in and sort of live in, I don't know, groovy land or hipster land or whatever, then that entails music, you know? And it Indeed. entails a lot of music. and. The beautiful thing about Melbourne, I've been here for nearly 20 years, is that the music here is world class, you know. Um, and not just in our genre, not just in the Jamaican mm -hmm. ska, but we're talking, I don't know, rockabilly, punk, uh, pop, uh, reggae, whatever you like, you know. Uh, there's some top class bands here and venues closing down means that you can't do gigs, you know. So, because uh, I find the musicians here, are pretty passionate about what they do, um, and uh, yeah, venues closing down is not good. But well, they have to be passionate. There's no money in music here. Uh, yeah, I but think the quality of music is good. Uh, you know what I've seen? I've been playing this town a long time. It, it's just it's changed, um, it, but it hasn't disappeared. It, it's the, the venues have got smaller, and what's it's sort of it's been an interesting thing. The bands have actually be, had to become a bit more flexible. Uh, I mean, you can sort of like kick against it and sort of say, oh yeah, you know, this is all bullshit, but you got to work with it in the end, you've got to deal with it, you know, and, and there's still venues like tonight, this place here, it's a small room, but you can still adapt your line-up and your sound to sort of work that room. Uh, I mean, the days of the big, you know, Bombay Rock used to be across the road, big rock venue, massive PA, loud, full-on rock, those days are gone, you know. It's smaller venues now, it's like the wine bar size. And, but you can still build a crowd, it won't be the same crowd, it won't be like thousands going off, you know, the venue, you know, down St Kilda used to be, all these sort of the, the ballroom, crystal ball and all that sort of thing. Those days are gone. There's smaller rooms now, uh, quieter rooms, but the band have got to be more flexible. And, and a lot of bands, you have to sort of like, you've got your 10 piece line up for your festival gig, and then you've got your four or five piece line up for a little room like this yeah. you know, sort of thing. And you just gotta be a little bit more thoughtful about what you're doing to work with it. So just sort of adapt to yeah. uh, you what's know, available. Is, you know, you can sort of complain, say, oh, you know, it's all fucked and that, you know. But in the end you've got to deal with it. Yeah, you know, you gotta play. You know, it's like you've you gotta play in the room that you gotta play in. Yeah. Right? It's like you, you know, you can only sort of whinge and that about you know, you gotta deal with it. So you you, you work with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, you, you do your cut down versions, you know, sort of thing. Four or five piece lineups if that's what you have to do. But you can still get out and play if you're prepared to, to work at it. And on the different lineups, uh, you guys, you tend to have this great thing where you get a lot of very, uh, very talented musicians gravitating towards you and playing alongside you, playing as part of your lineup for various, um, various gigs, which has got to be a lot of fun, a lot of. Um, Excitement. Mm. Who are some of the great musicians and other bands who you've had uh, the pleasure of playing with? Oh, oh man, had, uh, where do we start? We did a few gigs with Pat Powell lately. Oh. Uh, he um, used to play in a band called Club Scar, it sort of came out of Sydney years ago. Yep, I was lucky uh, enough to sort of bump catch the St Kilda gigs with a couple. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. festival. Uh, you know, like these are old mates, so they've just been around the tracks for years. And it's really nice because, you know, we all a bit of experience and you've got a lot of contacts and you just hook, hook up with these people and like they know where you're coming from you know where they're coming from and it can be pretty quick that you sort of get together and sort of work up a set and, and that sort of stuff um, 
you know, we've almost got like a family of musicians, and mm. we can draw up, you know, yeah. there's horn players, like we've got a guy playing, Dave Williamson's playing, yeah, you know, it's like, you know, it's been years ago, yeah. um, uh, you know, he's just a player, you know, he knows what he's doing, he's been around, sort of thing, and he can step in tonight, we haven't had a rehearsal with him, you know, he'll come in, he's got ears, he'll play, you know. Yeah, he knows yeah. the music. Yeah, he knows the music, he, kn he knows what we're about, he's got ears, don't need a rehearsal, we'll just play, yeah. great, yeah. it'll sound great. Yeah, we've got a little. We've had uh, Ted Kazan from Commissioner Gordon ah, yeah, singing play with us. Yeah. Paul Coyle from Boston End from yeah, the Melbourne Orchestra. Um, just various yeah. guys tonight. We've got Adrian playing keys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it is. I mean, as, as Chris said, I, I like to think the Scavendos is a big extended family. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, that's right. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, it's not a, a defined lineup. There's a sort of a basis to it. You know, that, that's sort of there. But around that, there's just all these guys, and it just keep, you know, it keeps it interesting. You know, I turn up, I don't know who the hell's going to be on that so It's fucking great. Well, we're like it's great. It turns up. Hey, 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 go, I haven't seen you for ages, let's play. You know, it's like, it's brilliant, you know, these guys are onto it, you know, it's like they're onto it. You don't have to muck around, you know. Yeah, it's cool. Like, you know, I mean, there's no stuffing about, they know what you're doing. And they've got a love for the music as yeah, well. Yeah, that's it. Definitely. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. Yeah. And it also, there's no I've money in it. So. <laughs> <laughs> something I've got to say is that what I've learned from the Beatles is to listen. And I used to have a bad habit of closing my eyes when I played, and I've had that burnt out of me. Um, what I've had to, what I've learnt, what I've had to learn, is to listen. And it's a very, it's a very hard thing to explain if you're not a musician, but you can actually hear where people are going with the music. If you really listen, if you're really tuned to that, you can hear where the music's going, and you can do something that your brain isn't telling you to do. It's something deeper than that, it's feel. And if, if, if I've learnt anything from the vendors, that's what I've learnt. Yeah. It, it takes a long time to learn your stagecraft. Yeah. You know, it's beyond the instrument. You know, it's, it's like a magic thing. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Cool. Probably, we've got time for about one more question. Yeah. Um, just on the thing of you guys having tons of, uh, as you said, your extended family coming and playing with you. It also goes the other way. I know a lot of you well already brought up the Strange Tenants who have such a great reputation around Australia for the music they've played. Um, I know a few of you play in other bands and you've uh, helped out. One of the main ones is probably the Melbourne Scar Orchestra who mm -hmm. have done some great things. Um, what are some of the experiences playing with other bands that you've been lucky enough to sort of partake in? I reckon it's really nice uh, for us. Um, like just the, the, the vendors have, uh, we, we're not, we, we had a really busy December and then our march is going to be fairly quiet because a few, a few of us are, are off with the Scar Orchestra, which is wonderful. Uh, we had uh, a couple of weeks ago Chris and Johnny were off doing some work with the, the tenants up in Sydney and Brisbane and they were great gigs. Um, they went off. Um, but it's always nice when you come back, you know. I, I like to think yours is a comfy pair of slippers, do you know what I mean? Sure. Uh, you know. Something you can always go back yeah, to. It is, it's really reliable, enjoy. you know, and uh, we, we've... Uh, home cooking. It is home cooking, it's biscuit tin home cooking, and it's so biscuit tin and home cooking that it's taken us ten years to actually record the full length <laughs> album, which we're doing at the moment, you know. We've got 15 tracks, ten originals, and we've chosen four or five of our favourite covers. So you've put out several EPs, yeah. um, hopefully people have heard a little bit, we might even play some during the show, yeah. um, but what can people look forward to on this new album? I reckon what Chris was talking about before, those different flavours, you know, it's not it's not going to be a ska album, it's going to be a ska vendors and friends album, and all all the different flavours that that entails, you know, we've got, uh, we got some reggae, we've got some rock steady, we've got some ska, we've got some rhythm and blues, all within the uh, Jamaican umbrella. Is that what we love? Loads of guest vocalists uh, you know, coming in, you know, we've got the girls. Yeah, we've got Kerry girls. Simpson uh, yeah. joining us as well. Yeah. Pat Pearl coming in and doing a few tunes. So it is, it's, it's a bit of a collective and that's, that's mm. the way we like it, you know. Mm. Excellent. All right, well, I think that's about all we've got time for. Okay. If you just tuned in, this is the Scar Vendors. We're down here at the B East um, in East Brunswick, and you're listening to this on 88.3 Southern FM.